Okay, so the goal for this video is to go through all of our options for processing a cat to get it out of its trap and prepped for surgery. So in this instance, we're gonna go straight from trap into surgery. In a later video, I'll talk about um, recovery and care options and also some, some handling aspects. Uh, first and foremost, we're gonna have our gloves on and to be as safe as possible. Now, we do not always have to wear two gloves. Um, if all I need to do is hold the trap still or hold a door or hold some, some part of this where I have one hand exposed, I can just use one glove. And now if I need to administer anesthesia um, to prep for surgery, and I can do that right through the outside of my trap. And so I do have a stuffed cat. Again, I've got buttons of the cat. So I can just have a, sing a single hand manipulating the trap as I need to and use my other hand to inject. That's fine. I need to have the, the right safety gear for the circumstances. So if two gloves is appropriate, then wear two gloves. Um, don't cut corners. Again, the great dexterity in the armor hand um, allows you to do a lot of finer motor tasks like use a syringe. So ideally, we're just going to inject through the outside of the trap and we're gonna be done. So injection, make sure that we're covered um, and then whatever other parts of a process you need to do, um, tagging, uh, prep whatever other pieces of prep that's that's not the purpose of the video we're just getting ourselves ready for surgery so now this animal is anesthetized we're going to move on and do whatever other parts of the program okay so in this instance the cat has come in in a community cat den um, and a lot of programs use community cat dens on the front end on the capture end once they're they're transferring the field out of traps and into community cat dens or maybe they're handing these out to the public to bring cats in with um, I don't personally like that because it's so hard to manipulate the cat once it's in here. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you, you need to go out and buy a whole different set of equipment in order to do um, these tasks. Uh, it's just not ideal. If you don't have these, if you're not already utilizing them on the front end, I would discourage you. I would say use um, transfer cages, which we'll cover next. But if they come in in a, in, a de in a den, first of all, we do need two gloves for this process. Uh, we likely need two people in order to use um, the den shield appropriately and safely and have somebody else inject the animal. So we're gonna raise at the same time. And I, I keep doing this, I keep turning this sideways. The handle needs to be horizontal. Handle, horizontal, HH. Okay, so we're going to lift and we're going to push. Now the cat has a lot of visibility right now around this. It might not hurt to just start off with a towel and push until we get resistance. And then we can move the towel. We can work with a second person. I, I think ideally, um, let me see if I can get it so you can actually see. So I'm, I'm gonna remove the towel for your visual and give you a bit of an angle there. We're pushing downward and squeezing the cat against the back and then we're injecting. We can stop wherever we need to if the cat has stopped moving and we can just go halfway and that was enough. Um, if we didn't need to do, if we didn't need to move at all, fantastic. Uh, we move as far as we need to and we apply as much pressure as we need to but for as little time as possible. And again, this is, this is a tapered opening. So you'll see it's very loose at the beginning. So you need to be more cautious here as you go back the, uh, the entire den is tapered and it ends up very, very tight, very snug in the back. So be careful you're not getting hung up. Now your hand is around these holes, but it also gives you the most access to the cat. So as you're, as you're squeezing, do be careful and that's why we're wearing gloves. And now we can simply inject through there. And we're only gonna apply as much pressure as we need to and stop as soon as we can. And as soon as we can get a good injection, we'll stop there. And this, this process really leaves the most room for injuries and escapes, uh, which is why I really don't like to use the den. Alternatively, and I, I don't even really consider it an alternative, but there is the side door on the den, but you've got to, you've got to reach in and the cat has full, full use of its uh, motor skills. So you, you really have no, no control whatsoever and there's a lot of risk. If the cat is completely shut down, um, that might be access, uh, acceptable. You might be able to reach in and give an injection through there. Um, but I, I don't think that that is great policy. It gives a, a lot of room for injury and escape. Like I said, um, that's why I just don't like the den on that end. The den is really intended for recovery. 
Um, if you're recovering cats in a shelter environment where they're going to be in a condo um, and they're going to use this as sort of their, their hidey hole, um, fantastic. That's what it's for. Or just recovery even after surgery. It's very easy to make it dark, but still easy to check on the animal through the clear front. So we can make this super dark, put it in a quiet room. That's our recovery box. And then we're going out to the field. Okay, option number three for intake at the clinic site is going to be the transfer cage. And I'm going to uncover this again for informational purposes. The transfer cage has a single vertical door. Um, it is, the dimensions are extremely similar to the most common size of traps. Again, in this program, we're, we're using the 36 by 10 by 12. Um, which is a great size of trap and, and mates really well to this. Um, we, can, we can do anything that we need to to this animal, um, anything that is appropriate for us to do um, very easily and very safely without ever physically contacting this animal. Um, my preference is that animals come to the clinic either in a trap or in a transfer cage uh, because we can use trap dividers and we can, we can divide this cage as much as we need to in any way that we need to. If you've got let's say three dividers, you can divide vertically. I can isolate one cat from another. So I could have a cat on this side and a cat here. I could put a third one in. I could separate three, cat, three cats and I can process them indi individually. Um, if you're in an organization that just doesn't have the resources for um, squeeze cages or restraint cages, you can use the, the dividers as a restraint. And we're not going to poke the cat, but we can work these in and just reduce the amount of space that the cat has to work with. I would need a third really to box this cat in. Um, if I need to, again, if I can, if I can simply inject the cat from the outside, I'm going to, but that's just not always reality. We can't always get that really easy injection from outside. And when we're doing that, again, we're going to keep the cats covered the entire time. I'm only keeping them uncovered or the fake cat uncovered um, for demonstration purposes. Real world, I'm going to inject from here. I barely need to lift this. If the cat is immobile, um, tucked into the corner, I can just inject from the outside very quickly. Skilled hand can do that um, a majority of the time. But there are plenty of cats that are, are just too fractious to do that. They're too, they're too mobile. They're too agitated. Um, and we need to add in more more equipment as much as as much as we need to. So again, we can we can use this to squeeze. We can use this to isolate. Um, I can also use this to block off the door. So I can create a new door with my trap divider. Uh, let me open, unclip the door first. So I can make my new door with my trap divider. Now I can remove this door and I can, I can work here as needed. That's a transfer cage and this just gives us the most flexibility, the most, the greatest number of options and options really um, lend themselves to humane processing and handling. So if we have good, cho good choices and a lot of them, then we can, we can employ the best technique for the situation. If you've ever seen me teach an in-person class, you know I get really messy. There's a lot of equipment involved, um, particularly when you're introducing people to all, all of the different tools um, and techniques. So please excuse the mess even in the video. So this is a set over cage. So it's extremely similar to a transfer cage. It gives you all of the features of the transfer cage, including the vertical door, which is awesome. Um, but it has one other feature, which I, I really, really love um, because the bottom tray comes out. And when that tray comes out, that gives me what is effectively a square net. And if you've ever tried to net cats with a round net in a square corner, um, you know why this, this can be so useful. So if I've got my cat up against an edge, if I'm whatever, whatever type of capture program you're running, if you're running a cruelty scene where you're trying to catch a bunch of cats in a, in a hoarding house or something, you, you can set that right over the cat and now you have containment. And so I can just work this over to a flat surface and then I just slide my tray back in. And you got to work with the cat a little bit here. My fake cat is not going to work with me. 
but you've obviously got to slide that underneath of the cat. Um, once I get to a certain point, I can, I can flip it and tuck. Again, I've got my gloves on and I'm going to use these spring clips to keep that floor from sliding. Okay. So I love having a couple of these available. It's a great tool to have in any animal control or humane, humane law enforcement officer vehicle um, because it's so versatile. It allows us to um, double up a trap so we can catch two cats in, in one trap. We can process, move, move the cat into this and use that trap again. So it's an equipment multiplier, but it also can act as a, as a net in a lot of different circumstances, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and it's very easy to work with if you're bringing the cat in for community cat program uh, for SNR or TNR and you're going to process the cat out. So I really love this, this set over cage. The link will be in the description. Um, I can't recommend this enough just having one of these um, in your toolkit. Okay, so now we're gonna talk processing more difficult cats. So we've already said anytime you can inject from the outside of a trap or transfer cage, um, that's ideal, but that's not always possible. Sometimes we need more equipment in order to process animals safely. So enter the squeeze cage. So the squeeze cage differs from the restraint cage and I'm gonna demonstrate each. Um, the, the squeeze cage, the biggest difference is, well, first of all, it's a, it's a lower cost. Um, I, I find it's a little less durable, though highly effective, um, and it needs a wall to operate, um, to operate effectively. So again, it's got one of these little restraining clips. These extend outward, and now it is ready for use. So I'm going to open the vertical door, prepare the trap as well. Unclip that, unclip this. Make sure that they're well aligned. So there is a little restraining clip here on the squeeze cage. I'm gonna make sure that that's not blocking anything. I'm gonna slide it up under the, under the trap and that's gonna make sure that these are right up against each other. I'm gonna to try to get my doors positioned at an angle so that they're really easy to close. I don't necessarily need the door of the trap at this point, hopefully. Um, I do want to make sure that these two don't separate, and that can be a risk. Um, it, many cats will already have run out of the trap and hit the back of the um, squeeze cage, so we want to make sure that we're always ready to slide this door down, and that's why we want it cocked at an angle. We're never going to, um, we're going to always be ready to close it, I should say. So again, with transferring, Right now, we have the illusion of escape, so that cat may just rock it out and try to get out of here. Um, that's the quickest way to transfer a cat, certainly. Um, it's not always the prettiest. Now, if the cat is a little more, um, little more shy, timid, shut down, um, using its freeze trait, we're, um, we're gonna now make the squeeze cage the safe place. So now this, this is an intimidating and scary place and hopefully the cat will simply move on its own. I can use my body to try to accomplish that as well. If the cat is trying to move away from me, I can simply move over and let that happen. Again, I do want to be careful that these are not going to separate. Now, if I want to be super cautious, I'm really concerned, I can add a couple of carabiners and make sure that these are connected. You need usually three carabiners to make the angles work, and they're going to need to be really small carabiners. Um, I've done that with dogs uh, when trapping larger dogs with much larger equipment. Um, I've never really had the need for cats, but that is an option if you have that concern. So now if, if my cat hasn't moved, as Buttons has not moved, Buttons the cat is still steady. We're going to use our, our trap dividers and we're going to simply sweep, sweep the cat as needed. So it can be, again, a little bit tricky from that sloped door to get that cat moved over. Um, we've already gone over this, um, but just to give you that other visual, now we can, we can go from the top and go from the side, whatever we need to do to sweep that cat over. And that's a really good option here at the beginning as well to simply start at the same angle and sweep the cat down. So I don't think we covered that technique earlier. So let's assume that Buttons the cat has moved over. Thank you very much, Buttons. Make sure this is closed. And now really awkward to try to push the squeeze wall 
I'm going to move the cover just for the sake of the demonstration. Poor, poor buttons. I got to, I got to move buttons a little bit so I don't smush his head. It's just sad. Um, it's really hard to move this wall on your own um, and then inject as well. You know, you have to inject from the other side because the cat has now been pushed up against you. Um, alternatively, you could have the cat on the inside and then you have to pull. Uh, what you really want to do is have it extended all the way out. The cat enters and now we're going to have done this very close to a wall and we're simply going to use that wall to, to push and excuse the warehouse wall. In this instance, a smooth wall is going to be much smoother and this way I can, I can push with one hand, apply again the minimum amount of restraint necessary for the circumstances in the cat. Um, one nice thing about the squeeze cage is that the metal is relatively pliable. It's, it's durable, but it's relatively pliable if you are squeezing. It will, it will conform a little bit to the cat's shape and keep the cat from moving um, without needing to apply um, more force than really is necessary. So the cat is now immobile. Very, very quick injection. Out, very quick release. And now, done. So if I'm processing a lot of cats, it's really ideal that the clinic have, have multiples of these so the cat can simply fall asleep in the squeeze cage and move on. So if you're doing a big program with lots of cats processing very, very quickly, and you're getting a lot of cats who, who need something other than simply injecting through the outside, it's ideal to have a couple of these so you can process them more quickly. We do want now quiet and this, this stage where we're anesthetizing everybody, getting everybody prepped for surgery, needs to be a really quiet stage. So it's not a time when we should be talking, socializing. Um, we want to be as quiet as possible because our sounds um, negatively impact on the animal's welfare. And we talked earlier in the introduction to community cat programs um, how, how important it is to avoid every stressor that we possibly can avoid. The restraint cage I find is just a little bit more durable. Um, having the double doors um, can be an advantage if you've only got one and you're processing them back out. Um, I really can't imagine why you'd go that way. Um, I think the main advantage of having the two doors is that depending on which direction you're facing in a room and whether you're up against a corner or a table or anything else um, that's blocking access on one side, you can use the other side. I think that's really the benefit of having the two doors. So if you are, if you're changing spaces frequently, I would maybe go for the double, double ended option, uh, double door option. I think that it just gives you a little more flexibility with what wall you're using when you're processing the cats. Um, the other advantage is that it's just much easier to use as an individual. I mean, the squeeze cage was not difficult to use, but you did need that wall. Um, you don't necessarily need a wall with a restraint cage. We're going to skip the part where we process the cat through the trap and assume that the cat's already in the restraint cage. Now, with the restraint cage, because I have these little locking tabs, I can, I can just sort of set it and forget it. Obviously, I'm not going to walk away from it, um, but I can squeeze as much as is appropriate for the cat. Again, not, not too much, not too little. Um, I don't want the cat moving around and bending the needle and, and spraying drug, and then we're not sure how much drug the cat got, and then we've got to deal with that on a medical basis. So we're going to apply as much restraint as we need to for as little, as little time as possible and do that quick injection. So the restraint cage just gives us a little bit more flexibility um, and I think it's a little easier to operate as an individual and usually this, this station is going to be an individual doing it. Um, so I think that this, this has some advantages when it's one person processing the cat.